With the change of seasons can come a change of behavior in our kids. And as parents, we don't always have the answers as to why. So if you notice your kid is acting out, my next guest says parents often fail to recognize that the underlying culprit could be jealousy. Studio 5 parenting contributor Heather Johnson is here to explain. Great to see you. You too. Jealousy. Jealousy. I didn't yeah. expect this topic to land on our table. Yeah, it's interesting. It's kind of like when our bodies are sick, right? They manifest symptoms. And we look at those symptoms, and those symptoms can represent lots of different things that could be wrong, right? There's overlapping symptoms. Yes. And jealousy falls under that. We don't often recognize that when kids are anxious, when they're angry, when they're overly sensitive, even bullying, right? We know that jealousy actually lies at the root of bullying and cyberbullying. It means that kids are feeling jealous in some way. Lying is another symptom of feeling jealous, right? Those are symptoms of jealousy. Now, I would, I would attach this, this problem of jealousy to teenagers. Does this also show up or manifest in, in kids? Oh, absolutely. Have you ever gone with one of your kids to the store and you're buying a birthday gift for a friend? And they say, well, how come they get that? Can I have one too, right? Or when we're talking to them about going somewhere and we realize that we can't go because there's other things to do and they start to say, you always spend time doing that. Or mm -hmm. I never get to go. Those are all statements of jealousy. Not just jealous of people then, but jealous of, of time, circumstances, time. Energy, circumstances, all of that. You know, I remember our son who's now grown, but when he was in first or second grade, we went to a parent-teacher conference and the teacher looked at us right away and said, oh, how was your trip to Korea over fall break? And my husband and I looked at each other and we looked at the teacher and went, we, we didn't go to Korea over fall break. <laughs> and you know, she went on to say, well, your son told us in class that that's what you'd done. And so we went home to him and we said, hey, bud, your teacher mentioned this, what's going on? And he went on to say that everyone was sharing what they'd done over fall break and his didn't seem cool enough. And so already in Korea. first year, yeah, well, he has I an mean, uncle who'd been there. Oh, and so yeah, I was gonna it was say, tied for him. <laughs> points for creativity, that was a good reach. But he looked at us and yeah. he said, well, I, I didn't have anything cool enough to say and I wished that we had gone where they went and so I just made it up and told mm. my class that that's what we'd done. I mean, this is six and seven years old. Wow. So this is what we're feeling. It is a very common emotion and it's terribly uncomfortable. Think of it as an adult. It's oh, yeah. very common, but it's really yeah. uncomfortable. All parents make mistakes. Heather, is there anything that we are unintentionally doing that could make this worse? Yeah, when we compare, this makes it worse. Mm -hmm. Anytime we're comparing. Like, look what she did or look how she did mm -hmm. it. Or even, you know, when we ask them questions about what grades did you get compared to someone else. Okay. All of those things, that comparison, it puts them in that position. When we have unrealistic expectations, uh, of our kids and pit them against other people, that is gonna do it also. Okay. And a big one that our kids feel is anytime we blame. So this is again, blaming a baby or a younger sibling. Well, can we go to the park? No, we can't, the baby needs a nap. And then they say, well, can we go do this? Sorry, I gotta clean the kitchen. Well, mom, can we, I'm sorry, we can't go do that on Saturday because of, and we blame something else. That immediately brings up those feelings of jealousy. They so become. Wh what am I saying instead? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, uh, interrupt you. What am I saying instead if we really can't go to the park because the baby really does need a nap? Well, we're much better off looking at our kids and saying, here's these things that need to happen today. We want to do this, and the baby needs this. How can we make them come together, or how do we work this out so together? So telling more of the story. Instead of just blaming, I'm sorry, we can't. Because all of a sudden, they're like, well, now I'm jealous of my sister. They all, she always gets time with you. And I'm jealous of a clean kitchen because it always gets more attention than okay. I do. Okay. All of this fuels feelings we don't recognize they're having, yeah. but they're having. Okay. They're having those so feelings. tell the more complete story. Uh, uh, some other things we can do. You say we can turn jealousy into intention. Yeah, because those things that we don't want to do, they will hurt us. But these things like turning this jealousy into something positive, energy that's intentional, will help a ton. So when kids come home and say that they're jealous or frustrated that someone else has something that they don't, well, then let you and I talk about if it's important to you, what can we intentionally do so that one day we can take that trip or we can acquire that thing. Now we have to be careful and make sure that it's not under the guise of comparison and those other things, Sure. but there's energy there. And so we might as well take those uncomfortable feelings and say, normally you feel it, what can we do with this, right? If you really want the same grades that your friend got, well then let you and I spend some time on your mouth and work harder so that we can get there. I love how you said there's energy there, mm -hmm. like focusing on that energy and channeling it to something, something to better. Something intentional, right? Yeah. The energy's there no matter what. Yeah. We can put it towards being jealous and then all of a sudden you've got a first grader who's telling a fib to his class, right? Or we can transfer that into something that is going to build, that lines up with our values. You say we can use it to foster a unique strength. We wanna point those things out in our kids. So we want our kids to see where their unique strengths are 
Remember, whatever we offer to our kids, they will aspire to for the most part. And so if we're pointing out the things that they don't do well, that's gonna, again, foster the comparison and the jealousy. But when we can help them see where they're unique, where they stand alone instead of comparing them to everyone else, they'll look for those things in themselves, right? If they're a fighter, our 14 year old knows in our home, we believe she's a fighter. This girl has more fight than anyone I've ever met. And we celebrate the heck out of it in our house. And so she's constantly looking for ways to be a fighter. It's unique to her. They will aspire to that and there's no time or room for jealousy when we find those unique strengths. It's her superpower. It is. There's also room when we're speaking about them and us to make sure that we celebrate our sameness. This means that we're willing to tell our children where we've also felt these same emotions. Mm. Remember, jealousy is common, but if our kids don't ever hear that we've felt it and how we felt it, they can't connect with us. They really take comfort in knowing, wow, my mom felt, has felt this before. Oh, wow, sometimes my mom struggles with this now. Them knowing these things, how we're the same, will help them feel okay about it. When they feel okay, they won't need to take those other measures, the anxiousness, the anger, right, the bullying. Right. They will then want to take the energy and make it something Just intentional. Hearing too. the word jealous, I, I don't remember being introduced to that word mm -hmm. until I was a teenager, right? right? So just hearing that early and knowing that early. You also say we can elevate others in how we approach this topic. And lift them up. You can even see in that point that when we lift up other people and celebrate them, there's less room, less energy for us to compare ourselves. Mm -hmm. Remember, at its core, jealousy isn't about just wanting what someone else has. The problem is, especially with our kids, when they want what someone else has, that means that they're not worth enough because they don't have it. Mm -hmm. That's where we run into trouble. It isn't just, I wish I took the trip. Yeah. It's that, man, because I didn't take the trip, I'm worth less. Mm -hmm. And so when we elevate other people and celebrate them, it helps eliminate those feelings of lack of worth. And that's what we're trying to do with our kids. We're talking about an emotion, something kind of inside, but how can we address the behavior that results from this feeling of jealousy? Yeah, this will like with any emotion, we'd never wanna punish or do anything negative to the emotion. Okay. We get to feel emotions and we want our kids to feel the emotions, right? It's not a problem to feel mad. It is a problem if you hit your brother because you feel mad, right? When it comes to jealousy, it isn't a problem that our son wanted to take a different trip over fall break. Lying about it though, the behavior is the problem we should be talking about. And so we can help our kids see the emotions are just fine. It's okay to feel it. Remember, jealousy is a common emotion. Right. What are we gonna now do? What's our behavior gonna look like when we feel these things? If we can help them start to like buckle down or, or double down on what this emotion is and we can be more aware of it, we'll realize that a lot of times our kids feel jealousy. Mm. They look around and think, these other people have these things. I wish I did, and I'm not as great because I don't have them. And we can help them do something with it. I like this topic. It has me thinking. Heather, thank you so much. You can find Heather's contact information on the Studio 5 website.